Hello folks, hope you all are doing great and I welcome you all into this webinar of Java Full Stack. I, first of all, I want to thank, really thank Tech Stories for uh, arranging this webinar for me to talk to you people and I can see there's a good amount of count over here. Thank you so much guys for joining up. We're going to start in right now. I'm going to talk about Java Full Stack development. I shall be dis dividing this discussion into a um, little bit of you know multiple parts so that we have a very good objective tracking you can say on this particular thing. So the first thing I'm going to talk about over here in my objective list is that that what exactly is full stack development because I have seen all, all over the time people end up you know giving wrong ideas about full stack development they kind of do a mix and match about it. So we're going to talk about very clearly what is full stack development. That's our objective number one. The objective number two is going to be that what is the current demand in the market? And objective number three is going to be that how do you how do you prepare yourself for the market? How do you make yourself prepared as a fit for the market? All right, so these are the three questions that we are trying to uh, kind of find out over here. So, and uh, I'm assuming that the people over here, the audience over here for today, you are looking for a job in the current market and obviously not just wasting your time trying to figure out, well, let me see what the thing is and hanging around. So I guess you are a pretty serious bunch of people, all right? So I'll not waste too much time of yours. I'll try to keep it short, maybe 15, 20 minutes or something. So the first things first, what is full stack development? So understand when you talk about full stack development, we are talking about the complete stack of technologies that are used for making a project or a complete, let's say an application, right? And you becoming a developer of the entire part. Okay, I'll just break it down for you a little bit. What I'm trying to say is when I say full stack development, so you have basically uh, two stacks, okay? One is the front end stack, I'll explain you, okay? Just let me write down the terminology over here. One is back-end stack, okay? All right, so the front-end stack uh, and back-end stack, these terminologies only hold good when you're talking about a web application, okay? So what is a web application, first of all, okay? Let's try to understand that. Uh, there, are multi there are actually two kinds of applications, honestly, in the world, I mean, two separate divisions. One is standard applications, or which you call a desktop applications that just you have to install on your PC or your Mac and you just need to run them. Just example is let's say I'm using Microsoft Paint over here. Okay, I'm using MS Paint as my whiteboard. So this MS Paint is a standard application. And then there are web applications like that is not really installed on your PC. I mean, um, think about Facebook. Now, Facebook is there in the in the servers of Facebook, right? They say that Facebook has got a server. And if Facebook is, let's say, not responding, you say the server might be down, right? So you got a server somewhere sitting. You don't really wish to know where it is because you don't really care about that. But you have it somewhere. And you, as an end user, you need a device through which you can log into the servers. So you will see that majority of the time when you talk about web applications, most of them require a login, not all of them, however, most of them require a login. So you can sit on any device you want, like Facebook, if I say, you can do Facebook from your laptop, from your desktop, from your friend's PC, from your mobile phone, doesn't really matter. You can log in from anywhere and you can see the same data every single time. So that is not installed on your computer, but installed on a server, that application. So when you make an application which is going to be installed on a server and people are going to use that from their own PCs or Macs or something by logging into there or kind of seeing it from, a, you know, remotely accessing it, that is going to be called a web application. A desktop application is typically, you, you know, like, uh, let's say if you come back to my desktop, right? I got a lot of things over here. I got a tool called paint.net. So if I just click on this, it is going to open up this application on my desktop. Now, it has been actually installed on my PC. And that's the reason that this thing is opening up that is working, right? This is a kind of a Photoshop kind of a stuff. But uh, let us say when you talk about web application, that is major of the majority of the time, or in fact, every single time, it is going to be opening up on your web browser. Okay, so you got to open up your web browser, let's say, 
and you try to go to facebook.com you open it up over here right obviously it is not logged in right now but you can see it is asking me for logging in uh, pardon the language it is not english it is kannada now here uh, so so that's basically the idea right so you got an application that is installed somewhere else that is kept somewhere else and you just need a device and a web browser through which you can you can just you know open up that and use it that that's your web application so in the concept of web application you have a very separate discrimination between the front end and the back end stack stack always means technology stack okay the technology you are using like java is a technology um let's say html css this kind of things are technologies right so the technology you want to use front end stack back end stack clear enough front end stack is the part that um is going to be the user facing okay it is going to be the user facing so people when they try to let's say go to your website they see the website the web page okay you can also call it a web page that is your front end so the technology stack that you choose for building the web page is going to be your front end stack and back end stack is the application that is working behind the scenes let's say java for example a java application is let's say running over there and the java application is doing all the tasks like when you say that i want to log in to let's say facebook right so now there is an application that is running behind there the web page gives you the fields for writing down your let's say username and password i mean if i just try to uh, kind of do this thing let's say i'll just come to facebook.com once again so if you see here i'll just um, kind of take a screenshot of this and probably oh sorry i'll just take a screenshot of this uh, where is it here we go i'm going to paste it over here and you will understand it let's see let us say i'll just make it a little smaller it's, it's too big in size yeah something like this now look here so here if you notice now you got this section okay that is asking your username this part asking your username this is asking your password so once you write that and you click on let's say login that is this button once you do that this actually goes to a server where an application is running which application back end application let's assume java i am not telling that facebook is built on java but some sort of an application is running okay so it goes over there so there is a server okay a server is a big computer actually a little powerful computer it is there this request that the person wants to log in goes to the server the server tries to find out whether it is a valid user or not in case it is it will take you forward so it will it will send back a response actually and in that response it will tell that well yeah you, this guy can actually see the let's say the home page so it will take you to the home page where you shall find your news feed and all those things in case let's say you have tried with a wrong username password the server is going to say no 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 this username password is terribly wrong and this person shall not be taken to the home page and it shall tell you that your username and password is wrong right so you can see there are two parts one part is majorly looking for the display okay it is the user display the thing that is being displayed to the user and this is the logical unit okay the application where all the logical uh, data transmission all those things are being done the data processing etc front end back end so this is your front end obviously i think you can understand by now this is your front end and this is your back end okay i'm just writing it over here let's say okay so when a person is a developer and he knows how to develop a front end part of an application as well as the back end part of that application okay that means he knows how to develop a web page as well as he knows how to develop a java application that is the time you can call that person a full stack developer so full stack development involves developing the front end as well as the back end i think that clears out the first point right what is full stack development in case you have a question i'll just give you a minute of time and you can write down in the chat oh i already see there are some questions coming up over here okay so here is karishma karishma is asking that do we need to include database yes obviously you do database falls under the back end itself okay so when you have your let's say java application means see that's a very nice question by the way so if you have your app there are two parts in the back end one is application one is database okay this is let's say app sorry app and let's say this part is let's assume database okay i'm just trying to kind of make a uh, let's say division over here all right so application and database so when you send this username and password from the facebook web page to the facebook application then this application tries to cross verify with the database whether that is a real user or not 
okay and that is how it comes to know that well it is a correct user so obviously if you're talking about a front-end development you are definitely including database as well that's a good question thank you so much Karishma uh, okay good explanation thank you so much Rahul you like the explanation mm. okay all right so I think that's it right so it's really nice to see that guys you guys are understanding this you're a wonderful audience thank you so much once again I'll try to get into the second question which talks about what is the current demand in the market well the demand in the market right now is actually high I mean in fact a full stack developers demand in the market is never low it is never low but the thing that keeps on shifting in the market is that what kind of technology stack people are right now uh, let's say more interested into and that kind of a you know thing you have to be preparing yourself for so um, the, the majority of the back-end work that is being done nowadays are done on Java and Python okay majority of them and also a portion goes on C sharp so there are three languages honestly Java Python and C sharp okay C sharp uh, also people you know call it dot net even though there is a little difference between calling it a C sharp calling it a dot net but people uh, kind of do that so Java Python C sharp these three languages are majorly nowadays being used as a backend stack there are other languages also but the majority of the market share is with these three guys okay and uh, talking about the front end the kind of technologies that you find out majorly used by people is going to be your um, you know the, the, the typical HTML CSS JavaScript these are the standards so this definitely you need to know along with that you can either take yourself towards the uh, angular stuffs or you can take yourself towards the react JS stuff so you can choose to uh, let's say specialize your front-end development experience either in the way of angular or in the way of react if you want you can do both but I um, I don't think that you shall need this uh, really but but obviously yes if you're interested you can go for both but remember HTML CSS JavaScript that is the basic foundation and then you specialize either in angular or in react the choice is yours okay market demand both have 50 50 so you are you are covered either way so you gotta either know let's say Java or Python or C sharp.net and HTML CSS JavaScript and angular or HTML CSS JavaScript and react okay that's all so you need to choose one from here and uh, with HTML CSS JavaScript either angular or react you can choose from right I think that makes a sense so that is basically the uh, current market scenario right so Java I would suggest in case you are learning let's say very first time very first time a programming language and you are actually interested in that I'll tell you to go for Java because Java is honestly called the uh, mother of all languages and uh, that's kind of true okay uh, the the object oriented concepts the object oriented programming uh, fundamentals all those things come into picture when you're talking about Java and they are very prominent throughout the entire course of Java so um, Java definitely stands a little bit higher into the standards when I'm talking about uh, back-end programming language definitely Python is a fantastic language and you can obviously choose to go with Python also because Python also has an equal demand as of Java C sharp the demand is a little less in the market compared to Java and Python so Java and Python should be something that you should be actually be more interested into okay if you do not know any any programming language and you just want to do it very fast you, do, you don't want to really dive deep you are not so much interested into talking about algorithms and this and that probably you can go for Python but in case you want to actually develop your concepts of programming and you actually want to dive deep within that you should go for Java both of them are good but you can choose depending upon your idea right in case you are having a trouble in trouble in let's say finding out which one you should go for you might ask your representative at tech stories to just you know arrange a call with me and you can talk to me okay I'll give you a complete idea depending upon your specific case okay it's very difficult to do within a you know right now there are 161 people over here it's very difficult to do it right now but obviously if in case you want a specialized you know consultation you can absolutely ask for that and trust me that is free of cost I will not charge a penny for you <laughs> okay so um, great so that is more or less what you're trying to do for your front-end stack and your back-end stack all right now comes the third question how to be fit for the market how do you become fit for the market okay what do you do so that the companies are now definitely gonna hire you okay what do you do for that now remember when you are trying to get hired into a company the process that you go through is called an interview okay the process is called an interview and what you need to do is that you just need to crack that and that's how you become 
selected in a company that is the first part and number two is going to be once you got selected how do you work how nicely do you work you should not be the person that who somehow cracked an interview and you have no idea somehow by luck you did it and now you are you know you have sleepless nights because you have to night you have to you know you cannot sleep you have to read stuffs because tomorrow you have to work in the office that shouldn't be the case it should be very smooth journey and that is only possible if right now you are preparing your knowledge in a fantastic way if now you are not doing it you have to do it when you are you know in a project and that trust me is very difficult absolutely difficult so this is the time you do it right how to be fit for the market how to be fit for the market means how to first number one crack an interview now i'll be talking about these things in way to uh, in a broader way when you are actually doing the real sessions but over here i'll kind of give you an interview uh, sorry i'll i'll give you kind of a idea about this remember when you are trying to be cracking an interview you need number one to have communication skills this is number one trust me don't get me wrong knowledge is very important and that comes in point number two knowledge but communication skills is the primary thing that you need to go for okay you must communication then number two is knowledge and number three is body language these are the three things that you need to have right these are the three things that you need to have knowledge at number two communication is required to be built first because if you do not have a good communicative skill then you cannot really push your knowledge you cannot showcase what you know if you want to prove in front of your interviewer that you actually know the thing you need to have a wonderful communication skills okay the better you do the better is the chance trust me there is no upper limit the better you keep on doing the better your chance keeps on building and the body language is like so when you're talking nicely you have the knowledge how do you sit in front of them how do you kind of um, you know make your appearance looks like so that it becomes much more likable by the interviewer correct that's your body language so these things slowly slowly they have to be built up that is kind of a personality development thing i'm talking about over here but um, when when let's say we we train people right let's say for example out of you people i'm pretty sure that 90% of you are going to join me but when you are joining us let's say tech stories we what we do is that we shall be actually talking about these things over and over over and over okay i'll give you an example let us say you know hindi for for example you know hindi you do not know much of english you can understand but you cannot speak english right i have seen a lot of people they have this trouble i myself had the trouble right i would only speak my mother tongue nicely i can understand english not too much a little bit and also i cannot speak english at all but that will change that will change once you start interacting on a daily basis initially it will be a little difficult but that's once again my job to help you out over there but slowly slowly that will change and they will start becoming much more fluent in speaking in in expressing stuffs and also the knowledge that you are going to get over here that is going to actually boost your confidence much majority of the time people are not confident because they are not very really sure whether what they know is correct or not and therefore they cannot speak nicely but here you have communication knowledge body language and that's how you're going to crack an interview trust me it works it has been working for a very long period of time it always have worked and then comes the second part that is how do you keep up your job or you know keep up a good place in your company when you got a let's say job that is purely got to do with your knowledge okay because communication body language have already built but the knowledge part and for that when you are trying to learn these things we talk about not only front end and back end separately but we talk about integration remember this thing it is it is extremely important to understand the integration all right a developer who does not understand how the integration of front end and back end works that person can never end up being a good developer and absolutely impossible and this is something that you typically miss when you try to prepare by yourself and not being guided by somebody who actually knows the stuff because when we work in the industry we work into the projects we talk about integrations more than even you can Im imagine okay so therefore you need to go for integration as well front end back end databases and integrating all this straight together to make a complete application and that's how you become fit for the market do i have any questions guys i am done with my part okay so i see 
Paul, okay, Paul has a question over here. Paul is asking that how much time do you think it takes to learn? The, well, it depends on you, Paul. It depends on your, um, let's say, prior experience. If you have some, you already know some languages, uh, you know, already you know that. Okay, there's another question from Shyamali who is asking that if we require to know some prior, prior language as well. I'll combine these two questions together. I'll answer you. See, if you know something previously, that is good. If you don't, there is nothing to worry about. Absolutely nothing to worry about, okay? And uh, the time that you need that will completely depend on the time you can devote apart from the class. Let's say the class I'm, uh, let's assume I'm doing a one hour per day kind of a class with you. And you also are spending, let's say another one hour by yourself. Trust me, you can probably pull off the entire thing in a span of maybe, you know, two and a half months. I am act actually sure about it. Trust me, I have been doing this thing for the last five years. You can pull it off in one and a, two and a half months or maybe three months, let's say. But uh, in case, let's say you fail to uh, put your effort, then probably it's going to take a little longer for you. But obviously, you don't need to worry about it because I understand not everybody can be a fast learner. Some people will be a little bit slow in their pace and that is absolutely okay. There is nothing bad about it. If you take a little bit more time, take your time. Okay. Nobody's going to ask you in the interview how much time you took for learning. They're just going to see whether you know or not. Okay. So take your time. You have all the sessions that you do will be recorded. In fact, this webinar, I think, is getting recorded. I, I, I'm known about that, but maybe. But typically, when the sessions go on, that will be recorded. So that recording will be given to you. And that is becoming your property. You keep it. You rewatch it as many times as you want. Okay? So if, even if you miss a session, let's say, you still have the recording that is going to your inbox. So you can still open it up. You can still watch it and download and keep the video with yourself. That is your property. And trust me, this is going to help you out a lot because it's a real life session. It is a real time session that is going on and that recording you're getting and you're trying to watch that. And that's absolutely nice. Okay. So yeah, I guess two and a half months to three months is probably your answer. I have a question from a lady called Richa over here and Richa is asking that if I can assist her on, what's this? Achha, you mean to say, okay, okay, okay. You're talking about database administration. Well, yeah, database administration uh, is completely not included in a full stack course, definitely. But database administration, the, at least let's say half of it, you get it over here. In case you're interested, Richa, I'll suggest you to you know connect on a call with me. I'll actually explain you what is the, uh, you know, the difference between the kind of databases that you're going to learn over here and what a database administration goes. I mean, what is the difference in the depth of the knowledge? So what I'll do is that I'll, I'll give you an idea about it. Make sure you just connect back to me through your representative in tech stories. So they'll you know connect a conference call with myself probably. And um, or else in fact, they can also help you out about it. So you, I'll just, just explain this one. As of now, just understand maybe 50% of what a DBA does, DBA means database administrator, 50% of that you are going to get already within this course. So I think that kind of holds good for you, right? In case you're interested, you can take a separately database classes and probably if you're going for, let's say, you know, you can just talk to a representative and just let them know that you want to know that they will definitely arrange something for you. That's for sure. Okay, uh, thank you, Jyoti. Jyoti says it was good. Thank you so much, people. I guess you learned something new today, right? So that was the main objective that you actually learned something and it is not that, that you kind of, you know, the same thing over and over, right? So I tried to cover a lot of things in a very small amount of time and I guess it was useful. Thank you so much for sticking till the end, guys. I think I'll close it off. Take care. Bye-bye.